Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be talking you through quickly uh, two of the models that are in the development uh, section in Unit 1 for Geography GCSE, LXLB. And before I go over these, just make sure that you press the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Um, and I'll go over these with you now. So two of the models that talk about why countries develop that try to explain it are Rostow's model here on the left and Frank's model here on the right. So I'm going to go over both of them very briefly with you just to explain the significance of each one. So Rostow model talks about how every single country can go from underdeveloped, low income to high income. And it's just a matter of following five stages. So his model talks us through these five stages, which I'm going to go over with you now. So it assumes that every country is able to do this. This is the kind of prerequisite, is that each country can do this kind of freely. So he based his model on the development economically of Europe and North America. And as we'll see a little bit later on, it's maybe not um, applicable to some of the poorer countries now as when we get to look at Frank's model. So in stage one, he saw that the country was in low levels of development and most of the people were employed in agriculture. So that didn't give them very much money to spend on um, investment or infrastructure, etc. And the country was quite poor. But what he saw was that as time went on, the people were able to grow more crops and move into stage two, where they sold those crops as cash crops and they were able to make a bit more money. And from that money, they invested that into infrastructure, a little bit more technology and got a little bit better at agriculture, etc. So the country started to develop. So from stage two to stage three, they carried on selling their agricultural goods. But now, because there's a little bit more money that they were putting into the country in terms of infrastructure and education and healthcare, etc., they were able to start maybe manufacturing or processing some of those goods. And the economy started to kind of take off towards stage three. So as we move into stage three, um, there's more money spent on, uh, in, like I said, infrastructure, there's more money spent on education, people can get better jobs. If people are working in manufacturing and processing, they're earning more money, so they're spending more money in the economy and giving more money to the government in taxes, and those taxes can be spent to improve services, etc. So the company, the country, I should say, starts getting better, getting more developed. As we move from three to four, there's a lot more, um, they're trading, they're starting to trade now backwards and forwards. Their manufactured goods are worth more money, um, more investment into the country overall. Um, there's more factories opening and the economy starts to take off. More people are working in manufacturing. They've got more disposable income, so they're spending that on services. So the tertiary sector also starts to kind of kick in as well. And as we move into stage five, the drive to maturity, as uh, Rostow calls it, this is um, an economy like the UK or America or anywhere in Europe where we've mostly got tertiary um, jobs for people and there's lots and lots of taxes being paid to the government. Um, we're not manufacturing here anymore are we? because we've sent it to China, but we could be. We were kind of in stage four and the economy is kind of fully fledged, um, good economy, good economic growth, etc. So he saw this um, as any country could do this. And one of the downsides as Frank came when Frank came along in the 60s, um, is that not all, all countries do go through these five stages. And what happens is at stage two, um, when we look at Frank's model, Frank would argue and other economists would argue that the um, old issues of colonialism, etc., and even neo-colonialism um, halts a lot of countries at stage two. So they're not able to move through the five stages. And Malawi, which you look at in the textbook, would be one of these countries that is kind of halted here because of colonial issues and cash crops not belonging to the country etc and exploitation from TNCs over time um, has halted it here so many countries like Malawi maybe have barriers to development which is one of, in one of my other videos maybe physical or human barriers economic barriers which stops it but Rostow's model stated that this was the way that all countries develop right okay so like I said before Frank came along in the 60s and he said no that wasn't really true that many of these countries suffered from colonialism or post-colonial colonial issues so they've been exploited and the lands have been taken off them so they weren't able to develop and he saw that there were basically two types of country there was a core which was the uh, the UK and Europe and North America and there was the periphery which was the uh, poorer countries around the world, which were providing us with raw materials. 
So that's what Frank sees. He sees the fact that we always have to have exploitation of the periphery in order to provide the core with all of the cheap raw materials that it requires to manufacture goods. So he sees a movement of trade where we take the, we, uh, as in the core, the West, we take the, they're shouting about the Formula One, I think down there maybe, or the football, I don't know. Um, so the core region um, takes and exploits the raw materials from the periphery. And the periphery, then isn't able to manufacture because of terms of um, because of like WCO isn't strong enough to stop um, taxes and tariffs etc which again you can check out in another video and the periphery will stay poor and it won't be able to develop because we need those raw materials what we also do is we resell those manufactured and processed goods back to the periphery because the periphery um, isn't able to manufacture them themselves so they buy those goods back from us at a higher cost. So this keeps poorer countries poor and richer countries rich and that's where Frank had a fundamental issue with Rostow because he saw that this wasn't true that like I said before colonial problems in the past and colonial uh, factors um, have an impact even today and the downside really of Frank's dependency theory is that we do have kind of a, um, a, a rise of the BRICS, etc. So some countries are able to get out of this poverty. So that's a negative to Frank's dependency theory, that actually colonialism, although it's negative, and FDI and TNC investment can be seen as negative. It has helped places such as India and China, more so China, to get out of that periphery and move into, I, I suppose, a semi-periphery or its own core. So there are downsides of both of these models. But that basically is Rostow's model of development and Frank's uh, dependency theory.